Here at 6 a.m., remembering a trailblazer, Sandra Day O'Connor, the late Supreme Court Justice with major ties to Arizona, will lie in repose today in our nation's capital. And ABC 15's Nick Saletti is in Washington, D.C. for us this morning with more on O'Connor's life and legacy. Nick, good morning. Kaylee, Megan, good morning to you. Justice O'Connor certainly earned her place in the history books. A trailblazer in so many senses of the word, broke so many glass ceilings throughout her 93 years. Most notably what she did here at the U.S. Supreme Court in our nation's capital by becoming the first female justice on our nation's high court. Obviously leaves behind quite a legacy nationally as well in our state in Arizona. ASU's law school is named after her as well as the federal courthouse. Uh, so much of her life and career spent in the Valley, which is why she has become an icon, not just for the nation, but also for our state. You know, last week I spoke to one of Justice O'Connor's sons, Brian, about what her legacy is and everything she leaves behind. And he says her legacy comes down to something very simple, but equally as powerful. It was clear that she had a position as a woman that was not uh, typical. Trailblazing is more like it, and it was something Brian O'Connor saw his mom do many times throughout her historic career. Even before becoming our country's first female Supreme Court justice, her first voyage into the history books came in 1973 when she became the majority leader of the Arizona Senate. It was the first time a woman had ever held that role in any state. We would all be waiting for the Senate to adjourn in Arizona, which once or twice went till late in the night, you know, midnight, and we're out there in the station wagon with the skis on top, loaded, ready to drive to Utah or Colorado for our, our Christmas ski break. Less than a decade later, O'Connor, then a judge in Arizona, would be thrust into the national spotlight when President Ronald Reagan nominated her to the U.S. Supreme Court. You just would never dream of that happening, right? A dream that became reality, the boundary-breaking moment, historic in every way, especially for the little girl who grew up during the Depression on a dusty Texas ranch. Both her parents, my grandparents, uh, we called them M.O. and D.A., uh, Ada May and Harry Day, uh, were able to come out from the ranch and see all this and be on the steps of the court with her. And so when you look at the environment they grew up on, I mean, they started with no running water. It just, uh, you can see it's getting me a little worked up. That it was incredible, I'm sure for her as it was for all of us, that her parents were able to be there and see that. Throughout her quarter century on the high court, Justice O'Connor would rule in several landmark cases dealing with issues like affirmative action, abortion, and discrimination. But it was one case in particular Justice O'Connor would later suggest in an interview maybe the court shouldn't have taken up at all. Bush v. Gore, which ultimately stopped the 2000 recount in Florida. Brian tells me he flew to D.C. and sat in on the proceedings. And the next morning, she's up making toast and coffee. It's probably six in the morning, and she just said to me, well, we made our decision, and half this country is going to hate me. In fact, for a long time, it was known as the O'Connor Court because of the power she would wield while finding middle ground. How did she feel about being that swing vote? I don't know that she liked it, <laughs> quite honestly. I don't think she was ever one looking, she wasn't one looking for attention, it just happened. If that's the position she was put in, I, I think she did a good job handling it. Of all the things that your mom has done, what do you think her legacy is? Oh, she uh, would say, oh, here, here lies a good judge. And she, I just think she'd just like to be known that she was a, a good judge, not the greatest justice, uh, but not a controversial one, and that she, you know, job well done. Thank you, Justice O'Connor, and, and she would be very good with that. Yeah, and Brian tells me it was something, obviously, that his mom took very seriously and wanted to make sure she was always doing a good job, doing right by our country, and, of course, by our nation's high court. 
More at 6.30 with Brian about uh, what Justice O'Connor was like as a mom and all the memories that he and his brothers share as a family and also their uh, touching relationship with their father as well. 